All right, I'm going to do a video on how to determine proper pitman arm length. So I'm doing a, a fab up here for suspension, steering, and so on. So to, to determine the proper pitman arm length, I thought I'd just do a quick video on how I determined that. So first, to, to find out what pitman arm length I need, I need to know what travel distance my steering has so right now everything's on jack stands so it easily moves that's pretty simple i just turn it all the way to one lock and in, in one direction measure off of where i'm going to have my steering shaft my my input for my steering on the axle so this is called the drag length that comes from here to your pitman arm or to your steering box so i'm going to run uh, mechanical steering with hydro assist on this so i'm running uh, actual mechanical like like a lot of stock vehicles have so i measured from this point to the uh, spot on the frame a determined spot on the frame then i turn it all the way the other direction to full lock and do the same and do the math and i find out i have eight inches of movement in my current steering setup now something to keep in mind there um where you set your steering locks does determine how much steering angle you're going to have. So I've got it set a little conservative. I certainly could go more. Um, some would go less just to protect U-joints. Um, but uh, I've got it kind of set in the middle. So we want to make sure that when we're said and done with our steering box, that we have enough travel that if I did decide to go a little bit of a, of a steeper turning uh, a higher degree of turning that I have enough in the system to do that, that I'm not limiting my steering box, that my steering box is coming, actually contacting, turning all the way where I'm contacting my steering stops on both sides. So that's step one. I determined eight inches of travel there. Then I have my steering box. This is the box I'm going to use. This is just a, a pretty standard Saginaw box. Chevy or Dodge comes with these. Um, this one I'm going to modify, drill and tap. And what's really helpful is having a few different pitman arms to pick from. So this is one, I think this is off of a WJ if, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so what I did is I cut a hole in this piece of cardboard. I've got the box on my, on my toolbox. I clamped the cardboard so that it can't twist. And I took a permanent marker put it through the hole, and very simply turn my input and mark the travel. All right, now that I've marked that out, I've got the curve here. Um, I did it a couple times, as you can see, just because uh, I am slightly guesstimating because my um, permanent marker is not the exact same size as the hole and it's a tapered hole in, in this arm here so um, just this gets me close enough we're not getting to the thousandths here so I measure across my start and my stop from full lock to lock on my steering and I find I have eight and a quarter inches of travel with this steering arm and it just so happens that that is what I need so that gives me eight and a quarter inches of travel I needed eight inches of travel minimum with my current setup. My current Pittman arm that I did this test with is six and a quarter inches from center to center. And now I'm going to custom make my own Pittman arm and I have my dimensions, center hole to center hole, what I need to do to obtain eight and a quarter inches of travel with a Saginaw box my pitman arm at six and a quarter inches center to center this should give me uh that extra quarter inch should give me uh, enough that if i want to go st to a, a sharper steering angle i can now i wouldn't want to make this say 10 inches because that's going to change the ratio of my box significantly giving me far more travel than i need and that's going to really play against me in the gearing of the box. I want to gear this box as, as much as I can and use as much power of the box rather than rely on 
my hydraulic steering assist. So uh, this should work out perfect, really. Um, I lucked out just having this, uh, this one around, but this is the method I found to be the easiest to come up with uh, how to go about figuring out what length I need. This is pretty much uh, not going to help you if you're, well, it would help you, I suppose, but there's much easier ways to go about this if you're doing a standard lift kit on a standard vehicle that's been done a bunch of times before. Um, you just simply call up your, your, your lift manufacturer and say, I have uh, this lift, this steering setup from you, uh, what do I do? Or the, the lift manufacturers can give you that. But when you're doing something a little different, uh, Ram Charger with Dana 60, stretched wheelbase, there's nothing standard about this. Um, I've got aftermarket high steer arms on a Ford Dana 60 front axle uh, with a Saginaw box. It's not exactly stock. So that's how I figured it out. Hopefully this helps somebody. Um, I, I didn't do an extensive search before making the video, but I thought there's no sense making a video if there's a bunch already out there, and I, I didn't see anything. So hopefully this can help you. Any questions, uh, go ahead and leave something in the, in the comment box below. Like, subscribe, all that good stuff. I'm not really sure it helps me because I don't monetize. But anyway, 